one two three go hi welcome back to the channel today we're going to be looking at how to grade Harry Alexa files straight inside of Final Cut Pro what is the right workflow to be able to go with this the first way you do this is by working with the 3d lot in the inspector so here for example i have a couple of clips that we shot from a music video recently what i have to do is when i go here into the inspector i come to camera lot. now if you do not see this straight away that's because it's probably on basic what you want to do is go here and go to extended. And then as soon as you do that, you can come here into camera lot and you can put in the Ari Log C 3D LUT. What that does, it brings your image back to a Rec 709. And you can do that across all the other clips. You can actually just select everything and then go into camera lot and use that Log C transform. Now this is Final Cut's way of just automatically doing this itself. I do not recommend that you do this this way. The reason is because every other type of adjustment that you do to this clips, you will be doing that to only the 709. So you lose the flexibility of the log profile. The second way that you would usually do this is to sort of create a node structure. You put the 709 at the end of the pipeline. And the way that we can do that in Final Cut Pro is to use an adjustment layer. I will turn off all the log C here and now it's back to being flat. So what you can do is grab an adjustment layer and just put that on the top. What happens is because of the way Final Cut processes image, the one that's at the very top, in this case, the adjustment layer is going to be at the end of the pipeline. It processes everything from top to bottom. If I go into that adjustment layer, what I will do is to grab I'll grab a custom LUT and just drop that on the adjustment layer. What I want to do or what I'm doing by this is that I am basically transferring that conversion into the adjustment layer. And then any other correction that I do to the clips, I will do it on the clip themselves. And I will only be affecting the log image that way. And I still get the full flexibility of the dynamic range instead of just working in, in, in the Rec 7 or 9. So here, what we do is to come and then look for Alexa log C to rec 7 or 9. We open that. So now you can see that if we turn this on and off, this is also going to be affecting all the layers on the timeline. But hey, and you can see what that is doing to the image. So in this way, any kind of adjustment that I do for example, we shot this really bright so that we can have the flexibility of working down in post. Plus, we were going for a very high key look on this on this commercial. So we wanted to light it this way. But now what I can do is when I come into this place and I'm just looking at my graph here, right? I'm just going to bring this down. Once again, I am not affecting 709. I'm literally not. If you look at, look at, see here, you don't see anything here anymore. Look at the moment I start to bring things down. Like you can literally start to see the trees behind the curtains. You know, that's the beauty of doing this this way, because I'm working the log, not the Rec. 7 and 9. And if I take that into another scene as well, let's say here, we're looking a bit dark, just a little bit. If I wanted to affect this, for example, I remember that I'm clicking on the clip, not the adjustment layer. I'm making the corrections to the actual log image. And in that case, now I will probably just come here, lift up that me tones, just bring some light around her. And I'm looking at this. This is where she's at. This is her skin. I just want to put that up just a little bit to, you know, make it brighter just a little bit, something like that. Maybe bring down those shadows just a little bit, just to give it, you know, that contrast. Once again, I'm looking at my curve and working with that, you know, just maybe touch this up just a little bit. And you know, that's the beauty of, of the Alexa. I hear a lot of people say that Final Cut Pro is not very good for 
color for transforming and all of this and that. Yeah, I mean, I just think that if you establish an actual workflow that helps you translate your information and your color strategy, I think that you can execute on any software. So Final Cut Pro is not, is it the easiest to use? Probably not, but hey, having an actual workflow will help with that. I'm probably gonna show you how to process red raw in Final Cut Pro because I guarantee you, I've checked, there aren't a lot of videos, especially of recent, about this on YouTube. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, how to process the new Red Raw, Log 10, Alexa, or any of the high-end cameras. The last one is by using a third-party plugin. And in my case, I use Dehancer. And I do wanna just, I wanna make a comparison actually. Let's see how Dehancer sort of just handles that transformation. So we choose a camera, a vendor is the Ari, the camera is the Mini, and the format is Log C. So this is where we're at with, with the Dehancer plugin. I'm in, it's looking cool, right? Now let's do a comparison Let's use this shot, right? This is a comparison. This is what it looks like with the answer. This is what it looks like with the regular transform. Is there a difference? Alexa, the answer. Alexa, the answer. Like, I don't know. Like, it looks the same to me. Having the answer on this adjustment layer here means that I get to do any change onto the clip itself and I don't lose the dynamic range of the log file. So this are possibly the three ways that you can work with Alexa in Final Cut Pro. I strongly recommend the second and the third, but if you are in the biggest of pinch and you have to deliver as soon as possible, if you feel like your exposure is great, you don't wanna do a lot of grade, you don't need to push anything, you just need to let go, I think just use the transform in Final Cut Pro in the inspector because you can apply that change to all the clips at once. Let me know if you have any other questions about Final Cut Pro and and yo, remember to subscribe, man. I need you guys to subscribe to my channel. It lets me know that you guys are interested in watching things like this and that I should keep making them. Bye.